Take your Bibles and turn to Psalms 119. In 1996, I came for the first time to Ibadan. And that's where I saw Nigeria the first time. And God changed my life. And I decided to help missionaries and national pastors reach people with the gospel of Jesus Christ around the world. And I am so glad that God brought me back to Nigeria. It has been a blessing. I want to preach on this subject tonight. Staying on target. In other words, are you going to reach your goal? Paul the Apostle came to the end of his life. He said, I fought the fight. He said, I finished the course. And he said, now I'm ready to meet my Savior. In other words, he did not get sidetracked. He kept going forward. He had a goal. He wanted to live his life for the Lord Jesus Christ. So he had to stay on target. And tonight I want to give you six words to remember so you can stay on target. Let's read Psalms 119 verses 9 through 16. Go ahead and read those. 9 through 16. Was it Jackie, Michino, Croninu, a share? Or a renewal Pabali, I am me, Kimmy, Kumaba, a chessio, Olukuni, Wolua, Kami, Nila, no re, and no me lee, a mere feel so, Bobo, it again, no re, a me, a me, your lee on a re, re, be lorry, only ruru, or all. Let us say, I shall only know a corre, Yosima, Juba, or no re. Let us pray. Father, thank you for this evening. Thank you that you love us. And I pray, Heavenly Father, you'd fill me with your power and please use me tonight to be a blessing to your people. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. The first word I want you to think about is the word choice. Verse number nine says, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed according to thy word? If you're going to get to the end of your life still serving Christ, then you got to make a choice. And you got to make a choice to sell out to God. Every person has to make a choice. Are you going to be wishy-washy in your Christian life? Or are you going to be like the Lord Jesus Christ and say, not my will, but thy be done? You have to make a choice. If you do not make a choice, you have made a choice. You have to choose to serve Christ with your life. I got saved when I was almost 20 years old. I did not know the Bible. I was religious. I was raised with moral principles. 
I had a good mother and father. But I was not saved. I was trying to work my way to heaven. I thought my baptism could help me get to heaven. Being a good person. Trying to obey the commandments. I was living and hoping that my good works would get me to heaven. And then my brother showed me from the Bible how I could be saved by grace. It is the gift of God. Not of works. And I realized that that was different than what I was taught. Tonight, if you're not saved, you must make a choice. The, the Bible says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's a choice. And my brother forced me to realize I may I needed to make a choice. And I finally trusted Christ as my Savior. Hallelujah. Are you saved tonight? Do you know for sure heaven is your home? Do you know your sins are completely forgiven? Was there a definite time in your life when you by faith received Jesus Christ and Him alone to save you? So you see, that, that sets us on the right path. But once you're saved, you also have to make a choice. Are you going to sell out to do exactly what God wants you to do in your life? Jesus Christ asked his disciples to pray for laborers. Are you a laborer for Jesus Christ? That is a choice. When did you tell people about Jesus Christ? When have you handed out a track? When have you invited somebody to church? That means you're either a laborer or you're not a laborer. We sing the song about revival. I'm all for getting excited. I like to say hallelujah. I like to say amen. I like to raise my hand. But let me ask you a question. Are you laboring for Jesus Christ? Are you laboring for Jesus Christ? It's good to be excited. But are you excited enough to tell others about Jesus Christ? The things I used to do, I don't do them anymore. The places I used to go, I don't go there anymore. The songs I used to sing, I don't sing them anymore. There's been a great change since I've been born again. Are you telling people that Jesus Christ changed you? That's called revival. If you're willing to say, yes, Lord, send me, I'll be a laborer for Jesus Christ. Shortly after I was saved, I decided, God, I'll do whatever you want me to do from the Bible. And I started reading the Bible. And the Holy Spirit started working in my life. And he started directing my life. And I started saying, yes, I'll follow you, Jesus. I did not know what kind of church to go to. I just wanted a church that preached the Bible. I wanted a church that followed the word of God. 
Let me ask you a question. Have you chosen to read this book? When's the last time you read this book? Do you read it daily? Do you pray daily? Do you talk to Jesus daily? Are you a laborer for Jesus Christ? The Bible says we have to make a choice. He says, taking heed to the word of God. That means listening, yes. But not only just listening. It's listening and then saying, I will do what I'm hearing. I will do what I'm reading. I will take heed to the word of God. So the first word, the first word. We're talking about getting or staying on target. We're talking about getting to the end of our lives and saying, I'm ready to be offered up. Getting to the end of our life and saying, I finished my course. I fought the fight. And I'm ready to see Jesus Christ. Number one, you have to make a choice. Are you willing to be a laborer for Jesus Christ? I'm glad you're here tonight. I'm glad your pastor's here tonight. I'm glad the other preachers are here tonight. But are you just sitting back and letting them do all the work? God wants you to be a laborer. He wants you to tell people what happened to you when God saved. He wants you to talk to your neighbors. He wants you to talk to your family. He wants you to talk to your fellow workers. He wants you to talk to neighbors. Have you made the choice to be a laborer for Jesus Christ? You're not going to fight a fight if you're not in the fight. Amen? Are you willing to be in the fight for Jesus Christ? So first of all, we see that we need to choose to be in this fight. Look at verse number 10. He says, with my whole heart have I sought thee, O let me not wander from thy commandments. The second word I want you to remember tonight is the word focus. We, God wants us to stay focused on serving Jesus Christ. The devil wants to get a sidetrack. He get, we get sidetracked by earning money. We get sidetracked by entertainment. But, but God says, I want you to remain focused on Jesus Christ. So how do we continue to stay on the right path? Keep our focus on Jesus Christ. The lawyer came to Jesus while he was on the earth. And Jesus asked him this question. What is the greatest commandment? And the answer is, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might, with all thy strength. And what was Jesus saying? Keep your focus on Jesus Christ. If you're going to get to the end of your life having fought the fight, you need to stay focused on Jesus Christ. Too many Christians are looking at everybody else. I don't witness because that person doesn't witness. Uh-huh. 
I don't soul win because that guy isn't soul winning. I don't give because that person isn't giving. We're supposed to keep our focus on Jesus Christ. Who saved you? Jesus Christ. Jesus. Who loves you? Jesus Christ. Jesus. Who cares about you? Jesus Christ. Jesus. Who cares for your needs? Jesus Christ. Yes. Who changed your life? Jesus Christ. Yes. My dear friend, you got to keep your focus on Jesus Christ. You constantly look at everybody else and you will fail. You will, you will find somebody that isn't loving God and you'll follow them. The songwriter said it so well. Friends may fail me, foes assail me, but Jesus never fails. Many, many years ago, people started leaving our church. A family this week. A family the next week. For 18 months, it seemed like there were families leaving the church. I sat down with my wife and my children that were still living at the house. I did not criticize those that were leaving. But I looked at my family and said these words. I said, we're still in the place that goes soul winning. We still have a preacher that's filled with the Holy Spirit of God. We still have a church that has a bus ministry. I said, we still have the same Holy Spirit directing our lives. I said, we aren't going to look at those people. We're not going to criticize them, but we are not going to follow them either. Our focus was on Jesus Christ. Jesus led me to that church. Jesus used the preaching from that pastor. And the same Jesus was still there. You want to get to the end of your life and be happy and thankful that you served God? You want to be able to say like Paul the Apostle, I fought the good fight. I finished the course. I'm now ready to be offered up. Number one, you got to choose to be a laborer. Number two, you got to keep your focus on Jesus Christ. The Bible says it so well. The Bible says it so well. Looking unto Jesus, the author and creator. Listen to me, friend. Listen to me, friend. Jesus saved me. Jesus changed my life. Jesus led me to the churches. Jesus gave me this book. Jesus answered my prayer. Jesus provided for me. So others may fail me. Others may disappoint me. Others may hurt me. Others may talk about me. Others may fail me. But Jesus never fails. You want to get to the end of your life? And you want to say, I fought the good fight. I finished the course. You must make a choice. Choose to be a laborer for Jesus Christ. Choose to get into the fight. And number two, you need to stay focused on Jesus Christ. Number three, I want you to, I want you to remember these words. Choice. Number two, choice, and then number two, focus. Number three, memorize the Bible. The verse number 11. 
Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Are you memorizing scripture? Look, the scripture is the sword of the word of God. Are you listening tonight? The scripture is the sword that will speak to your heart. The scripture will come to your mind when you're tempted. The scripture will comfort you when you're discouraged. Are you memorizing the word of God? The word of God is quick and powerful. It's sharper than any two edged And it will help you when you need help. It will strengthen you when you need strength. It will comfort you when you need comfort. It will guide you when you need guidance. It will feed you when you need strength. Are you memorizing scripture? That's what God says. He says you need the word of God in your heart. You need the word of God to give you that strength that you need. You see, the Bible says it's a lamp under my feet. One time I had a flashlight. Follow me. It was an interesting flashlight. It had two lenses. It had a lens that pointed straight down. And it had a lens that pointed straight out. And when you turned it on, it shone two lights. The one, the one light shined straight down so that I could see where I was stepping next. And the other light shined it straight ahead so I could see where I was going. And that's what the word of God will do. It's a lamp under my feet. To guide me every day and every step I take. But praise God, it's also a light under my path. It will keep me on the path. You want to get to the end of your life? You want to be able to say, I fought the fight. I finished the course. I'm ready to see you, Jesus. You need the word of God to light your daily life. And to keep you on your path. Are you memorizing scripture? God is showing us how we can stay straight. He's showing us how we can stay on target. First of all, you got to choose. Yeah. Are you going to choose to be a laborer for Jesus Christ? Are you going to choose to be in the fight? Secondly, he said you got to keep your focus on Jesus Christ. Not on everybody else. Not on the preacher. Not on your friends. Not on your family. Keep your focus on Jesus Christ. Number three, he says you need to memorize the word of God. The fourth word I want you to see. Look at verse number 12. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. The fourth word I want you to think of is teachable. Be teachable. In other words, ask God to continually expand your knowledge of the Word of God. Ask God to expand your understanding of the Word of God. Ask God to give you more wisdom in your life. In other words, never be satisfied with your Christian life. Always want to know more about the Bible. Take your Bible and turn to Proverbs chapter number 2. Proverbs chapter number 2. Too many Christians are willing to just be saved and that's it. 
Sherry of Follow for Christianity, what of any Gala, Otanano? I'm saved. I'm on my way to heaven. I don't need anything else. If you're going to be successful in this life, you need what I'm talking about tonight. Sometimes Christians will hear something preached from the Bible. And they'll say, well, I just don't understand. Well, I just don't think what that I don't understand what's wrong with fill in the blank. Yeah, What's wrong with drinking? What's wrong with the wicked movies out there? What's wrong with cigarettes? And they sit back and say, well, I just don't understand. Why is the preacher preaching on that? Here's what your problem is. You do not want to expand your knowledge of the Word of God. I want you, I want you to notice what chapter 2, verses 1 through 5 say. Verse, verse 1 starts, talks about receiving the Word of God. In other words, receiving the Word of God as the Word of God. It's not a suggestion. Hello, it is not a suggestion. It is a command. It is truth. It is the word of God. You'll never grow in your Christian life if you're always saying, well, I just don't understand. You first have to receive it. You have to say, yes, that's the word of God. It doesn't matter if you understand. I repeat, I repeat, it doesn't matter if you understand. God does not say understand first. You know what God says first? He says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Before you understand, you are supposed to have faith that God says it. The, the, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. He, he did not say, understand everything first. You know, when I got saved, I did not understand why rock music was wrong. But one day the preacher was preaching. And he said, get rid of that rock music. I was a brand new Christian. I had a big stack of rock music. You know what I did? I went home. I got a hammer. And I started smashing those records. You say, Brother Blau, did you understand what was wrong with rock music? No, I did not. But I followed the preacher because he was preaching from the Word of God. But wait, I didn't stop there. I wanted to know why it was wrong. I obeyed first. Then I started practicing verses 1 through 4. Look at chapter number 2. He said, receive the Word of God. Hide his commandments in you. He says, listen, incline your ears unto wisdom. He said, lift up your voice to understanding. Cryest after knowledge. Speak for her like silver. In other words, you do the studying. And look what verse number five says. Then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord. Here's what God is saying. You obey me first. Then you will, if you study the Bible, you ask questions, you listen to the preacher, you seek after the answers, and one day the light will turn out. One day you'll understand, oh, that's why I obeyed them. 
That's why I got rid of my rock music. That's why I stopped drinking the booze. You see, God says be teachable. Too many Christians are sitting back and saying, well, I just don't understand. Well, I just don't see what's wrong with taking a little bit of drink. I just don't see what's wrong with cigarettes. I don't see what's wrong with wine. Show me where God says you got to see what's wrong with it. Show me where the Bible says you have to understand first. No, he says you obey first. And then you be teachable. Study the word of God. Find out what the Bible says. And one day God will give you understanding. You want to get to the end of your life? And you want to be able to say, I finished my course. I fought the fight. I'm ready to be offered up to Jesus Christ. God says first you have to make a choice. Get in the fight. Be a laborer for Jesus Christ. Secondly, you got to focus on Jesus Christ. Thirdly, you got to meditate or memorize the word of God. Number four, you got to be teachable. Number five, notice the word I want you to see here. Attitude. Attitude. Look at verses 13 and 14. Psalms 119 verses 13 and 14. He's talking about declaring the judgments of the word of God. He's talking about rejoicing in his testimony. What's his attitude? His attitude to the word of God was, it's a wonderful book. It's a precious book. Some Christians, some Christians look at the word of God. It's so restrictive. You can't do this. You can't do that. You can't go here. You can't go there. You know what your problem is? Your attitude. This is a love letter. This is a love letter. This is a love letter from God to us. Says, I want you to have a wonderful, blessed, happy life. I want to use you for God's glory. And he gives us an instruction manual. And if he says, thou shalt not, it's because he's saying, I don't want you to be hurt. I don't want to mess up your life. I don't want you to have a ruined life. I give you this book to show you be careful of these areas. Don't go down that road. He says, I love you. What's your attitude about the Bible? Are you always looking for a reason not to obey it? Hello? Are you Hello. looking for a reason not to obey it? You have the wrong attitude. The psalmist was rejoicing in it. He said, it's like riches to me. And he said, I love the Bible. Next word I want you to remember. Or remember. Look at verse number 15. I will meditate in thy precepts. The next word I want you to remember, remember is meditation. Now meditation is different from memorization. Memorization is putting it into your brain. Meditating is thinking about it. You know what we need to do? Turn off the phone. Turn off the radio. 
Turn off the television. Turn off the internet. Get alone with God. And just meditate about how wonderful He is. Meditate how He's cared for you. Meditate about what God's given you. Meditate about how wonderful He is. Meditate on His love. On his compassion. On his provision. I mean, shut everything else out. And just think about how wonderful he is. One day I was driving down the road. I live in a farm state. We grow a lot of corn, soybeans. And as I looked at the corn and the soybeans, and they were about to be harvested, I was thinking about God. And I said, God, why do you continue to allow the United States to grow all this food? We are a wicked people. We kill, un we kill unborn children. We honor perverted lifestyles. We shake our fist at God. And I said, God, we deserve your judgment. And I thought, I th uh, what was I doing? I was meditating. And I said, God, why do you give us all this food? And here's the thought that came to my mind. Maybe God loves the world so much that he lets us raise this food so we can send it to other countries. Even though we're a wicked people. And we deserve his judgment. He allows us to grow that food so we can export it to different countries. For God so loved the world. That's the thought I was thinking. I was meditating about the goodness of God. I was meditating about the goodness of God. You want to stay on course. You want to stay on course. You want to stay on, you want to stay on target. You want to get to the end of your life. And be able to say, I fought the fight. I finished the course. I'm ready to be offered up. Then you better meditate about how wonderful God is. Somebody does us wrong. And you know what we do? We think about it. What's wrong with that man? Why did he do that? He should never have done that. I'm going to pray God's judgment on him. Uh, you know what you're doing? You're meditating on what somebody did to you. Instead of meditating on what they did to you, why don't you meditate on what Christ did for you? Because you're just as much a sinner as that man is. You have wronged people. You have talked about people. You have hurt people. Meditate on him. Because if you keep meditating on when people do you wrong, I'm not going back to that church anymore. That deacon, he upset me. And you're going to get to the end of your life. And you're going to have a messed up life. A ruined life. 
All because bitterness came up in your heart. All because you were meditating on what some other human being did to you. Instead of meditating on how wonderful God has been. Meditation. Finally, the last thing. Verse number 16. We need to rejoice. Oh yeah, ki ama yo. Excuse me, delight. Delight is the word. Kani inu didu. He says, I will delight myself in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. You see, these verses will keep you on target. Make the choice. Make the choice. Be a laborer for Christ. Make the choice. Be a, be, a, be a soldier for Christ. Number two, stay focused on Jesus Christ. Stay focused on how wonderful he is. Number three, memorize the word of God. Number two, keep te be teachable. Let the word of God expand your, or let the Bible, or let Jesus expand your word of God. Number four, have the proper attitude. Meditate on the word of God. And then delight in the word of God. Stay on target. God shows us how we can stay on target. Thank you very much.